In the vast expanse of the cosmos, objects emit radiation, a symphony of energy traveling through space. To understand this celestial concert, we turn to the concept of black body radiation. Imagine an object, a perfect absorber of light and energy, a cosmic vacuum cleaner. This idealized object, called a black body, absorbs all incoming radiation, regardless of wavelength or angle. But a black body doesn't just absorb, it also emits. When heated, it radiates energy across a continuous spectrum of wavelengths, a symphony of light. This emitted radiation, known as black body radiation, holds the key to understanding the colors of stars and the nature of the universe itself. Black body radiation is not just a theoretical concept, it has profound implications for our understanding of the universe. By studying the spectrum of light emitted by celestial objects, astronomers can determine their temperature, composition, and even their motion. Imagine a blacksmith heating a piece of iron. As the temperature rises, the iron glows a dull red, then orange, and finally a brilliant white. This change in color is a direct result of the relationship between temperature and radiation emission. A black body, when heated, emits radiation across a range of wavelengths. The intensity of this radiation, or the amount of energy emitted at each wavelength, changes with temperature. As the temperature increases, the overall intensity of the emitted radiation increases, meaning the object gets brighter. Furthermore, the peak of the radiation curve, representing the wavelength at which the most energy is emitted, shifts to shorter wavelengths as the temperature rises. This explains why the blacksmith's iron changes color from red to orange to white as it heats up. The hotter the object, the more its peak emission shifts towards the blue end of the spectrum. Stars, those celestial furnaces scattered across the cosmos, can be approximated as black bodies. While they don't perfectly absorb all incoming radiation, they come close enough for the principles of black body radiation to apply. Stars emit light and heat as a result of nuclear fusion occurring in their cores. This energy is radiated outward, passing through the star's outer layers and eventually escaping into space. The spectrum of light emitted by a star is remarkably similar to that of a black body, with the peak of the emission curve determined by the star's surface temperature. By analyzing the spectrum of light from a star, astronomers can determine its surface temperature, luminosity, and chemical composition. This information provides valuable insights into the life cycle of stars, from their formation in interstellar clouds to their eventual demise. Gazing up at the night sky, we are greeted by a tapestry of stars, each twinkling in a different hue. These stellar colors are not random, they are a direct consequence of the star's surface temperature and the principles of black body radiation. Cooler stars, with surface temperatures below 3,500 Kelvin, emit most of their radiation in the red and infrared parts of the spectrum. These stars, like Betelgeuse and the constellation Orion, glow with a cool, reddish hue. As stellar temperatures rise, the peak of the black body radiation curve shifts towards shorter wavelengths. Stars with surface temperatures between 5,000 and 6,000 Kelvin, like our own sun, emit most of their radiation in the yellow-green part of the spectrum. However, these stars also emit significant amounts of radiation at other visible wavelengths, resulting in a white appearance. Hotter stars, with surface temperatures above 10,000 Kelvin, emit most of their radiation in the blue and ultraviolet parts of the spectrum. These stars, like Rigel in the constellation Orion, shine with a brilliant blue-white light. To fully grasp the relationship between temperature and black body radiation, we turn to the work of two brilliant physicists, Wilhelm Wien and Max Planck. Wien's displacement law, formulated in 1893, states that the wavelength at which a black body emits the most radiation is inversely proportional to its absolute temperature. In simpler terms, the hotter the object, the shorter the wavelength of its peak emission. This law allows astronomers to determine the surface temperature of stars by simply measuring the wavelength at which they emit the most light. Planck's law, developed in 1900, provides a more complete description of black body radiation. It describes the intensity of radiation emitted by a black body at all wavelengths, not just the peak. Planck's law revolutionized physics by introducing the concept of quantization, the idea that energy exists in discrete packets called quanta. Together, Wien's law and Planck's law provide a powerful toolkit for understanding the properties of celestial objects and the fundamental nature of light and energy. Our sun, the star that bathes our planet in life-giving light, is often depicted as yellow. However, this perception is a result of Earth's atmosphere, 
which scatters sunlight, removing some of the blue wavelengths. In the vacuum of space, the sun appears white, a testament to its surface temperature of approximately 5,778 Kelvin. At this temperature, the sun emits a significant amount of radiation across all visible wavelengths, resulting in a white appearance when all the colors are combined. The sun's spectrum peaks in the green part of the visible spectrum. However, it also emits significant amounts of radiation at other visible wavelengths, including red, orange, yellow, blue, and violet. This blend of colors, when perceived by the human eye, results in the perception of white light. As sunlight passes through Earth's atmosphere, it interacts with air molecules, water vapor, and dust particles. This interaction, known as scattering, removes some of the sunlight's wavelengths, altering its perceived color. Shorter wavelengths, such as blue and violet, are scattered more effectively than longer wavelengths, such as red and orange. This is why the sky appears blue. Scattered blue light from the sun reaches our eyes from all directions. When we look directly at the sun, especially at sunrise and sunset when sunlight travels through a greater thickness of atmosphere, the scattered blue light is removed, leaving the longer wavelengths to dominate. This is why the sun appears yellow, orange, or even red at these times of day. The Earth's atmosphere acts as a filter, removing some of the sun's true colors and painting it with hues of yellow, orange, and red. While the sun's true color is white, our atmospheric veil creates a spectacle of color that graces our skies.